everyone. My name is Terence, and I'm a developer relations engineer on Android. I'm joined today by my colleagues Miao and Tuma, and we're very excited to talk to you about the latest developments for on-device generative AI, GenAI for short, on Android. In this talk, we will focus on what is on-device inference, how Android incorporates on-device GenAI, showcasing some Google apps leveraging Gemini Nano, and why it was the right solution for them, a technical deep dive into AI Core, the system service that enables access to AI foundation models running on device, a quick look at fine tuning and why it's important for Gemini Nano, and lastly, the conclusion. On device Gen AI can process prompts directly on your smartphone, tablet, or computer without any server calls. This offers several key advantages. Sensitive user data is processed locally on the device. The model offers full functionality, even with poor internet connectivity, potentially reduced latency, enabling real-time responsiveness. And lastly, there is no additional monetary cost for each inference because on-device Gen AI runs on user hardware. However, on-device Gen AI also has some limitations to keep in mind. Devices typically possess less computational power than cloud servers. So the models intended for on-device are smaller, and thus results may have lower resolutions. We're generally looking at between 2 to 3 billion parameters, almost an order of magnitude smaller than cloud-based equivalents. Similarly, the context window will also likely be smaller, and the model will be less generalized. So what are some implications for this? This means that fine-tuning is critical in order to get production quality. Zero-shot performance of the model has lower accuracy compared to what we're used to with larger models. Also, it means that the model is not going to excel at all use cases. For example, it's not as performant for open-ended conversations like chatbot or code generation. So what are some good use cases for on-device Gen AI? Most successful applications of on-device Gen AI leverage the unique strengths of on-device inference. Some examples include assistance with content consumption, such as providing a summarization or overview of text, assistance with content creation, like suggesting or rephrasing responses in messaging apps to change the tone or the style of a message, for example, simple classification of content, such as detecting sentiment in conversations or text. We have several ways for you to access on-device Gen AI capabilities on Android today. Let's start with Gemini Nano, the smallest on-device variant of Google's powerful Gemini language models. Gemini Nano is Android's foundation model of choice for building on-device Gen AI applications. It is integrated into the Android OS from Android 14 onwards through a service called AI Core, an Android OS system app. Developers can access this service using the AI Edge SDK API surface. Gemini Nano is already bringing delightful Gen AI user experiences for the Google Pixel 8 Pro and Samsung S24 series. We look forward to bringing it to more flagship Android devices in the near future. Since its announcement in December 2023, Gemini Nano has been available to a select set of developer partners through our Early Access Program or EAP for short. The response from the developer community has been incredible. We're actively collaborating with developers who have compelling on-device Gen AI use cases and signed up for our EAP. In 2024, we'll be investing heavily to enable and potentially launch with even more third-party apps. Gemini Nano isn't just for third-party developers. It's already transforming key Google apps. Let's explore some examples. To date, Messages, Recorder, and Gboard have successfully integrated with Gemini Nano. Let's dive into the features that some of these apps have built and why an on-device approach for Gen AI was the ideal solution for them. First, let's take a look at Messages, a messaging app with billions of users worldwide. Messages is leveraging Gemini Nano to power suggested text and magic rewrite a pair of features that provide users with suitable replies in any conversation. I'd like to specifically focus on suggested text, 
a feature that analyzes your conversations to generate full, ready-to-send responses with just one single tap. This real-time, privacy-preserving functionality wouldn't be feasible with server-based AI as it would necessitate sending the user sensitive conversational data off device to provide context. With Gemini Nano, effortless, privacy-conscious messaging is now a reality. This is just the beginning. Expect more amazing Gemini Nano-powered features delivered using AI Core in Messages. Here's a summary of their experience with Gemini Nano integration in the Messages team's own words. AI Core made integration with Gemini Nano seamless. We didn't need to manage model hosting, downloading, versioning, or updating. All of that was done on our behalf, and we could focus on fine-tuning the model for the best output. Next, let's take a look at how Recorder, Google Pixel's voice recorder app, leverages Gemini Nano to help users generate summaries of their voice recording transcripts. Recorder's debut in 2019 with the Pixel 4 series introduced incredibly fast transcription entirely on device. Students, journalists, musicians, and more built a strong community around the app's capabilities, but also wanted a quick way to grasp the main themes of their recordings. Recorder is built on the promise of protecting users' sensitive audio and text for meetings, lectures, etc., and always being available. Thus, the Recorder team knew that a high-quality summary of Recorder's transcripts would also need to be available offline through on-device inference. Here's a few words about Gemini Nano's integration journey from the Recorder team's own words. Despite being 20 times smaller than cloud offerings, Gemini Nano is a surprisingly capable model that doesn't compromise on quality. By fine-tuning the model specifically for the Pixel Recorder and deploying it via AI Core, we're able to unlock these capabilities and have a feature that works consistently for recorder use cases. AI Core makes Gemini Nano integration significantly more simple. Miao, could you give us a deep dive into the AI Core system service and help us uncover its magic? Absolutely. Thanks, Terence. It is great to see amazing use cases enabled by Gemini Nano on Android. However, when bringing their apps to production, developers who use large language models face roadblocks such as deployment, performance, memory, and disk size. I want to show you how we overcome these by walking you through some of the technical details of AI Core. As Terence mentioned, AI Core is an Android system service designed to streamline your use of foundation models. It tackles the challenges of deploying large GNI models by centralizing runtime, delivery, and critical safety components. We have built AI Core because GNI models, while powerful, are huge and performance hungry, making them impractical to bundle within individual apps. By providing these models as a shared system resource, AI Core lets you leverage the power of Gemini Nano without deployment headaches. Your users benefit too, with a smooth, high quality Android experience. AI Core handles all interactions with the Gemini Nano model and hardware accelerators on behalf of each app. As a result, apps only need to call a developer SDK to run their Gemini workloads and don't have to worry about maintaining their own models. Another user-friendly aspect of AI Core is that it's distributed as a system service. A version of it is already present on the system image for eligible devices so users don't have to download it manually. AI Core is continuously updated through Google Play as long as the users haven't disabled automatic updates. This diagram describes the different layers of AI Core and how apps can interact with it. In the AI Core APK, the most important block is the Gemini Nano model, which Terence described earlier. AI Core also includes a fine-tuning layer called Low Rank Adaptation, or LoRa for short that allows app developers to customize a model to perform specific tasks. Apps can train their own specialized LoRa fine-tuning blocks to optimize the performance of the Gemini Nano model. Compared with workstations and servers, mobile devices are much more constrained in terms of computation power. As you can see from the table, there is at least one or two orders of magnitude difference in terms of memory size, bandwidth, computation, and power. Mobile devices also need to provide day-to-day -day functionality for users, such as sending messages to friends and navigating the web. 
Deploying a large foundation model within the constraints of mobile devices was no easy fit. Our success with the Gemini Nano was built on strong collaboration between numerous Google teams, including DeepMind, Android, and TensorFlow Lite. Here is a breakdown of what it took. Four-bit quantization-aware training drastically reduced Gemini Nano's footprint. Close partnerships with major SOC providers enable Gemini Nano to leverage dedicated AI accelerators, boosting speed and efficiency. Parameter-efficient, house-swappable LoRa support allows multiple apps to fine-tune Gemini Nano for specific use cases while being able to share the foundation model in memory and on disk. Along the way, we have also developed various tools to aid model transformation and target accelerator optimization. AI Core is also designed from the ground up with the user's privacy and security in mind, with several safety features built in. Both the input prompt and the results generated by the Gemini Nano runtime are evaluated against our safety filters before returning the results to the client application. AI Core is compliant with a private compute core concept introduced at Google I.O. 2021. Specifically, AI Core cannot bind to most other packages. The only exceptions are a limited set of system packages. The list of allowed packages can only change during a full Android OTA update. AI Core does not have direct internet access. It routes all internet requests, for example, the request to download the model through an open source companion APK, private compute services. APIs in private compute services have to explicitly show the privacy first nature of the use case. Let's hand it back to Terence to tell us more about fine tuning Gemini Nano. Thanks, Miao. As Miao alluded to earlier, fine tuning allows an app or service to customize a model's weights to perform specific tasks. LoRa is a parameter efficient technique used in fine tuning that doesn't require changing base model weights. LoRa enables us to optimize Gemini Nano for different use cases and applications while maintaining a single copy of the model on device to serve all apps that use it. So far, all apps that have integrated Gemini Nano in production have leveraged LoRa to improve performance. So why is fine tuning so important for on-device models when cloud models can solve many use cases out of the box with just prompt engineering? The answer lies in the constraints that on-device models face, which I discussed earlier. These constraints include model size and context window. Prompt engineering is not sufficient for these on-device models. LoRa fine tuning makes it possible for a small model like Gemini Nano to excel in particular use cases, such as smart reply and messaging. Since LoRa training customizes the model's weights to perform a specific task, you need a clear use case and not too much variance in your training data. Generally speaking, you must have at least 100 entries in your training data. The customized model is even more reliable when you have at least 1,000 entries in the training data. Remember, there is no right or wrong answer here. Experiment with different subsets of your training data to see what gives you the best results. And keep in mind that you can use larger models, such as Gemini Pro or Gemini Ultra, to help you generate training samples for Gemini Nano. To showcase fine tuning's effect on a specific use case, here's an example of generating a message with a given style before and after LoRa training provided by the messages team when let's go for a walk was given as an input and the model was asked to rephrase the message in a lyrical tone, Gemini Nano with free prompting responded with, let's take a stroll, let's explore the world, let's make memories, let's enjoy the view. Sounds pretty good already, right? However, with fine tuning, Gemini Nano responded with, let's roam and let our hearts beguile through meadows and fields will forever whirl a walk of joy our spirits will heal. In nature's embrace, we'll let our will prevail. What beautiful lyrics. Gemini Nano even made the lines rhyme. Similarly, when it's truly amazing was given as an input and the model was asked to rephrase in the Shakespearean tone, the free prompting responded with, a wondrous marvel it is. Again, already quite good. But the fine tune model came back with, it doth truly astound in true Shakespearean fashion. 
Gemini Nano is a performant model, and our enabling infrastructure makes it easy to integrate it into your app for production. However, open models are also gaining popularity amongst researchers, and it is now possible to run some of them on Android. Here's Thomas to tell you more about them. Thanks, Terence. Hello, my name is Thomas Aizan, and I'm an Android developer relations engineer working on machine learning and generative AI. As Terence mentioned, Gemini Nano is Android's recommended path to production if you want to run GenAI inference on device. But open large language models have also grown in popularity in the past year. And although they are not a good fit for production due to performance and memory challenges, it is not possible to play with some of them on Android devices. Recently, Research teams at Google released the MediaPipe LLM Inference API. It is a new experimental API part of MediaPipe that lets you run text-to-text -text GenAI models directly on device. Currently, the MediaPipe LLM Inference API supports the following models. Falcon 1B, a 1.3 billion parameter causal decoder-only model trained on the Refined Web English dataset. Phi2, a 2.7 billion parameter transformer model best suited for question answer, chat, and code tasks. Stable LM3B, a 2.8 billion parameter decoder only model trained on English and code datasets. And last but not least, Gemma2B, the 2.5 billion parameter Google Open model that is well suited for a broad range of tasks, such as question answering, summarization, and reasoning. After selecting your model, convert it into the MediaPipe format using MediaPipe's GenAI converter library on your development machine. Then, siloed it to your device. The file is expected to be more than one gigabyte, which is okay to experiment with but makes it relatively impractical at scale in production. To learn more about the MediaPipe LLM Inference API, visit the MediaPipe documentation. Back to you, Terence. Thanks, Thomas. In this talk, we've explored the exciting world of on-device generative AI on Android. Advantages such as local processing of user data opportunity of reduced latency, and offline reliability open up a range of new possibilities for delightful GenAI features on Android. While resource constraints require some adjustments for on-device GenAI compared to server inference, techniques like fine-tuning and carefully crafted prompts make it possible to adapt to and thrive in these conditions. With unique advantages, such as being integrated into Android through the AI core system service, and a proven production path with apps from Google like Messages and Recorder adopting it, Gemini Nano is the foundation model of choice for Android developers when looking to build production use cases. As mentioned before, in addition to internal Google developers, we're actively collaborating with external developers who are participating in our early access preview to bring their use cases to life on Android devices we will be broadening access to Gemini Nano throughout the year. If you're a researcher looking to experiment with open models, the MediaPipe LLM inference APIs is a good fit for you. We appreciate your time today. Please make sure to check out other amazing IO talks, such as the GenAI on Android talk, to learn more about Google's additional GenAI offerings for Android developers. Thank you very much.